Hello guys, Isabella Reeds, Amazon Made Simple Podcast, and welcome to the next episode that will be in English with Russian subtitles. И даже если вы не говорите по-английски, это ничего страшного, потому что каждый эпизод мы переводим для того, чтобы наша русскоязычная аудитория, неважно в какой точке СНГ вы находитесь, всегда могли изучать и находиться на самом верху последних знаний и новых разных апдейтов, которые происходят в e-commerce и на Amazon Space. Сегодня наш гость будет Эндрю Моргенс с его агентством Marknology. Безумно интересно и рекомендую всем просмотру. And it's Bella Reed's Amazon Made Simple podcast. Here we are again. And today I have a very special guest who've been in Africa, Russia, and so many other countries. When I was learning and reading his biography, it's actually very interesting because you will never be able to meet people on a like daily basis who've been living surrounded by elephants and all this wild nature. So, and today Andrew Morgans is the CEO of the extremely famous and valuable marketing agency. Andrew, welcome. Thank you so much. What an introduction. That was, uh, I'm definitely going to send that one to the team. Thank you so much. I think, um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but our our uh, my neighborhood in in Moscow was uh, very close to yours growing up. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. We had the trolley in between the place where you've been living and I was living, which like was 30 minutes apart. Yep. Yeah, just I think that's that is extremely um, you know uncommon, uh, definitely to just meet somebody in the Midwest or meet someone in the Amazon industry with that in common um, without being Russian, right? So. Um, I think that's something cool, and I'm super glad that we've got to connect and get to know each other a little bit better. Had you on my podcast, so anyone listening here, um, I don't, I don't know if I'll have Russian subtitles, but we definitely you would not. <laughs> we definitely sh- shot it up in English and and got more of her story, um, and and look forward to learning more more as we go. Um, Wonderful, super excited to be here. Uh, you are the brand, like your face, your look, your agency. And even the water you're drinking right now is also the very valuable brand, right? So here is my question. How do you think brand is affecting and brand story is affecting the regular products? Because let's say I want to drink from this mug or I want to drink from the mug with an espresso sign on it. What is the actual difference and uh, what rules should we follow? Yes, great question. So... um... There's there's a lot of there's a few answers to that so I'll try to be succinct but you know what I feel like is um, I started caring about this um, one because as a nerdy kid uh, coming from Africa to the U S and and as trying to get tell, girls attention the wild and then wearing the glasses like super right. nerdy guy right well it, nerds weren't cool and um, you know so for me it was just how do you fit in how do you not get picked on. Um, and I always, I've always had kind of an eclectic style. So as soon as I got out of, um, you know, having hand-me-down clothes from my cousins or, um, things like that and and moving back to the U S it was, I wanted to dress myself and, you know, present myself as a skinny redhead. Um, my fashion was a way that I, that that I would get people's attention, you know, uh, as a kid. And, um, so it was something early on that I grew up with sisters They would say, Drew, you can't wear that out the house. Like, you know, you got to look like this and, and help me uh, when my colors didn't match. And so it's just it's something personally that's always been, um, you know, on my mind way before I ever got to apply it to business. But, you know, it's something that's that's stayed with me from um, I played music professionally. And, you know, when you're trying to make it as a professional band and you're talking to labels and showcasing um, they're, you're having conversations with them and they're like, we're looking for a certain look. We're looking for, you know, uh, a, a band that we can, we believe we can, you know, put money behind just like an aggregator trying to buy a brand that says, Hey, if you have a complete package, are you guys a complete package? Like, is there a story behind your brand? Do we think we can sell you? And so learn that lesson as well. And, you know, it's just translated into e-commerce and into Amazon. And as, 
um, you know, we st- I've started from from the ground up uh, in regards to from Upwork uh, almost eight years ago, nine years ago, getting clients there to, you know, working with some of the biggest brands in, in the industry now. Um, that was not always the case. And whenever I was working with a smaller brand, uh, maybe we were American made, maybe we weren't, maybe we were a family business, maybe we weren't. Um, what were little things about the brand or the company or the product that I could kind of bring to life and emotionally connect with customers? Because I believe if you emotionally connect with the customer over a story, um, you stand a chance of, of beating some of those big those big companies. And so, you know, there was a there was a lesson with um, a company called G Mama's Cookies at the time, and they're I think they're out of Arkansas, just a little mom and pop amazon or the mom and pop uh, brand and they wanted to be on amazon and um you know i told the story of of grandma's cookies and um you know how she made them and with love and like you know as a family-owned recipe and um we were outranking brands like nabisco and chips ahoy and oreo and, and all those kinds of things and how can a, a company that's like you know so small uh uh, rank on Amazon or be getting sales from some of the the biggest you know food brands um, in the world for and 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 to rank for terms of chocolate chip cookies and things like that. And what I learned was uh, there is a a market. There's a customer demand for um, you know they want to feel like they, there's this connection to local. There's a connection to a story that we all have uh, regardless of where we're from that I think we can relate to uh, being and. Um, if you do that well on Amazon, you have a limited amount of space, but if you do that well, um, you can beat some giants. And so, you know, it's, a, it's been a tool that I've been using for years to essentially, you know, stand out just from that Alibaba product or to stand out from uh, the big brand, maybe that's been in box retailer, uh, you know, for 50 years or 20 years on Amazon, there is an opportunity to, to beat them to the punch and essentially, um, you know, make it where customers between reviews and price point and, and quickness to, to the house, no brainer to buy. And I think that branding and a good story can do that. So I know that's a mouthful, but that's how I got here. And, and you know, uh, how I think um, it, it's helping brands big and small alike stand out from the rest. I agree. I recently bought the bread in the Whole Foods and that was okay. a very interesting story. Uh, I think the name brand name of the bread is killer killer bread or killing bread i think killer bread and i was reading i'm like oh, interesting so i was reading the story about this bread it's like one of the most famous breads uh in the united states right now and this brand this bread was created by the guy who've been uh in a jail and when he was like when he left the jail he started his own brand and now he's hiring only people who've been in jail before okay. and find all this store and he's like he he bought the farm he like raising all these like very healthy grains and he's doing all this interesting stuff i'm like wow so it's a great story to tell to people and of course like some people will be very like suspicious and they will not want to buy it however Like, I'm proud of this guy. He did a good job. And the bread is really good. And it's like full grain. Like, because I'm, I'm, if I'm eating bread, it will be only wheat, um, uh, grain bread. So I'm not bread. I'm not eating like any like sourdough or something like that. So yeah, the, the, the brand story and storytelling is very important for any type of brand. And genuinely speaking, when you guys are starting your Amazon business right now, Amazon is very, very smart. And uh, if you don't have anything behind you, especially given uh, just recent updates from Amazon, it's a very high risk that you can fail. So create your brand first. And Andrew, tell me how brand can affect you in 2022, 2023. Yes, a great question as well. Um, And I love that story of the bread. Uh, You know, I think that's a comeback story. And I love, I think Americans and all of us love a comeback story. You know, what I can say to um, knowing you have a a strong Russian audience, you know, what I'd say um, to all my Russian sellers is that the biggest challenge for you uh, when it comes to branding and storytelling, when English, if English is your second language or third language or fourth language or seventh language is, um, you know, there's those nuances that go into to language that only a native speaker can really pick up on. It's very subtle things. I can tell. (laughs) <laughs> right right yeah. okay so this this is the lift this is the heavy lift for any international seller selling on our marketplace just like if i was selling on yours um 
I would not even try, I think, because Russian is so hard. Um, but knowing knowing um, the the challenge, uh, it's finding good partners. If that's if you can't do it yourself, you know, finding a good partner that can help you navigate that. Because the photos and the copy, that's usually where you tell the story between the images and the, and the copy and the listing, um, is so 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 important to to a product success. Um, and an American consumer, if you're selling on Amazon.com, you know, if you're selling on Amazon Germany or France or Italy, uh, we're talking Amazon.com. If you're selling there, um, your customers are going to know, and they're going to know if this feels like a, a foreign product or does this feel like you're selling to them. They might not care that it's a foreign product. What they care about is um, who they're buying it from. Do they feel like they can trust the product? Do they feel like it's selling to them? Because that's what you're doing. You're emotionally connecting with them saying, your dog is going to feel better if he has this, or you're going to look prettier if you have this, or this is going to help you stay organized, or this is going to fix your height problem that you can't reach with this step stool, yeah, right? Pain so points. Pain points, exactly. Yeah. So that is the one thing I think would say was a challenge. Um, 2022 and 2023, I think just, you know, what we're seeing is the, is the bigger brands, the bigger retail box brands, um are paying attention to amazon you know the pandemic made them pay attention and so they are now looking to amazon you know cleaning up from resellers and wholesalers and 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 in-house um you know working on their branding and you're going to see some of that happening um as aggregators come into the space as uh inflation rises as the economy is hurting right some of them are How coming some of them are leaving <laughs> Yes, exactly. Right. And, um, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the case with, with anything, you know, this is hard. This is a, yeah, this yeah. is a, this is a hard business. Um, but where anyone has a chance to win and that's why I love e-commerce and I love Amazon is, um, we all have an equal opportunity and the best of us, the best sellers, the best, uh, businessmen and women, um, you know, have a chance to win. And so what I think that means for, for anyone listening to the podcast is, um, we just have to pay attention to all of the little things. It's not just a matter of I want to be on Amazon, get a product and get it on. It's what's my box size? And am I, do I have a story that's, that's cross-selling? Can I get my order value up? Well, the best way to get an order value up is to keep them in the, in the brand, in the business, coming back for more. Um, you know, it can be conversion rates. So if I can uh, convert at 10% better, uh, you know, over a year's time, well, my advertising costs go down because my advertising cost dollar is going further. And, you know, all these little things that I think um, you have to pay attention to as a seller now, maybe more now than ever uh, in the next couple of years while the economy is, is hurting a bit. Well, graphics and storytelling and branding is one thing you can invest in that is a, a lot of times a one-time expense that can last for a long time for you um, and, and carry you into the future. So I'll stop there. There's a lot of ways I can go with it, but I think that's, that's one thing to think about is just how to dial everything in just a little bit better. It's a great answer. And uh, you touched a very nice uh, part where Americans are supposed to trust you. And um, some races and nationalities, they trust only each other. So like people from Kazakhstan, for example, if they are inside of the country, they are buying only from themselves, from like brothers, sisters, uncles, whatever people uh, they're surrounded. Uh, if they are inside of like any other country, if they didn't find someone from their country, they will go to buy from someone else. However, Americans, they love quality. And this is what I noticed the most. So, and it's like... Uh, we have a pretty big gap here in between people who are buying the cheap stuff and people who are buying the very expensive stuff and yeah. people who will be bragging, Oh, I bought it cheap and they will be super happy. And they're waiting for their applauses and people who bought something very expensive and they're proud of themselves. They, they did something and they bought something expensive. So genuinely speaking, sometimes it's very hard to sell, uh, for the middle class, because the middle class will be, again, very picky about your qualities. So to make them trust you is the very hard part. So you're absolutely correct here. And when people... That was are, great. Yeah. That was great feedback. 
Yeah. So when people are coming to you and they're saying, okay, Andrea, I want to sell the pen and uh, where should I start? Like you, are you creating the brand story? Are you recommending like, Bella, you cannot sell just one pen from Empire Flippers. You have to sell 10 of them. So like what recommend the recommendations would you give to people? Like how many um, ASINs, how many products they have to start with and how big supposed to be their brand story. Should they add their brand story to every single product or it will be just at their storefront? I know it's a lot of questions, but I know you can no. answer them pretty quick. No. no, it's good. Okay, so let's let's try to go through that. So I don't think that there's a number of ASINs that you have to have. Um, what I do feel like is, because um, sometimes you might be just trying different products to figure out what works. But once you have one that works, let's say one of your products that you're launching does well. Um, well, what you can start before that and saying, is this a product that I could continue to develop more products around it? Or is it a product that's just a one and done kind of thing? Um, you know, if you are, let's say you're doing fishing supplies. Well, you launch a fishing pole. Uh, well, you can create all different types of products, tackle boxes and hats and, uh, you know, on and on and on. That would be one that, you're going to invest in storefront. You're going to invest in, in in a bigger picture branding because you want to bring that brand to life. You're going to create more products. There's also branding and storytelling just in, within one product. Okay, so you can do uh, – it's kind of a different approach, but one might just be telling the story of the product, like how it was brought, maybe why it was invented, uh, what it can do for you, what it can do for your pets, uh, that emotional connection piece. The other one will say – it will be more of a mixture of the product story and the brand story. Okay. So I'm talking about branding and I know that's a little nuance, um, but in a perfect world, you're kind of doing both within each product, you, you know, within your product pages, uh, your images, let's say you've got six images on the left and a video uh, you know, the video, you might have a product that you need an explainer video to explain what it is, or it could be a video that's talking about your other products, who you guys are, why your quality is the best, where you come from, um, you know, America, people seem to forget, uh, but there's a, you know, we are a, a country made up of all the other countries, right? So all that right. is, that's one of the differences and why we can't just stick with each other because we're all each other here, right? And so what it means though, is that we do have to trust. We have to figure out how to trust instead of it just being innate, instead of it being natural, instead of it just being built in, we have to learn to understand other cultures and, you know, different languages and the differences and how do we all get along and how to trust a different lift than a lot of other countries. And I think that that can be a learning curve for people that have never lived here themselves or that haven't spent a lot of time, you know, in the U S culture, even the state you're living in can change everything, you know? So one thing about e-commerce that I like is we're selling to the broad instead of just like, you know, a specific thing in our area. This is how people shop in Miami. This is how people shop in the Midwest. There's differences. People in the Midwest like to save money. Okay. Exactly. Like it's a very right. common thing. You have to be humble. You're like, I got this water. I, I got it for 50 cents. I saved $2. Just like you were saying, right? Like in the Midwest, if you buy something, Expensive, you almost always it's like embarrassing. Exactly. You don't want to, you want to look humble. Uh, that's just a blue collar mindset of hard workers. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, humility is never a wrong thing. Um, but know your audience, know who you're selling to. Are you selling to that audience? Are you selling a cheap product? Or are you selling a high end product? Um, you know, high end products are where branding is the most important, uh, because you're convincing people to spend more on your product. Why is it you? Is it the founders? Is it the quality of the product? Um, is it that the competition is fake and, and, you know, not as good? What, what are the things about your product? So like, let's say we're starting from scratch. Okay. I want to start there. So you've got You've got one ASIN. Uh, you believe that it's it's a fishing pole. It can be like a lot of other products maybe down the road if this one does well. You're like, I, so I want to be thinking about brand story from the beginning. And, you know, whether you have one product or a thousand, uh, you know, in 11 years of selling, um, you know, I've seen it all. I, I've seen brands that have three SKUs doing 17 million, uh, you know, and I've seen Impressive. SKUs with a, th a thousand doing nothing, you know, so yeah. It, it, it's not number of SKUs. It's really just like the quality of your product and, and, you know, how well you do selling it. So it's never the quantity, it's the quality. And, um, you know, where I would say to get started is we, we have tried so many things. We, you know, before we had a creative department, we had to rely on the brand and who they hired for photography or who they hired, uh, you know, who their graphic designer was in house or what content they already had. A lot of times uh, brands didn't have budget for Amazon. 
Uh, so they were essentially trying to reuse photos from their catalog or from their e-commerce site. And there's just a difference between selling on Amazon and selling on a website and selling on social media and selling, uh, you know, in a store. So um, as we've evolved, we've learned. And, and what I've learned is, um, you know, the best way for us, if we're working with a brand, even if they have an in-house team. So like, let's say you hire us, uh, but then you want to use your own graphic designer for everything after that. Uh, let's use that example. Um, work together to create a one or two page guide that essentially will, will work as the footprint. You don't need a 50 page brand guide. You don't, that's, that's useless. Okay. Absolutely. But if one did, we, we create basically a one to two page brand guide at most that shows what some potential images could look like. What are colors we can use together? What are fonts we want to use across all of our images? How do we want the feeling to be with the product? Is it one that we want to be scientific and educate why our ingredients are amazing and healthy for you and quality? Or do we want to create uh, a funny uh, or an edu- uh, entertaining kind of content that's more like clever and, and uh, eye-catching? Or are we trying to um, you know, say you're going to live with your – you're going to have more time with your dog and you get to be outside and play and this, this product is going to um, you know, bring you and your son together fishing at the lake? And that's an emotional connection about – what it's going to do for you yeah, right? are reading and they're trying to apply it to themselves and like yeah it's about me this is what i want to do this is how i want to feel this is what i want to be exactly love- that's exactly what we're trying to go with and there's not one size fits all so you have to kind of figure out that you know a lot of times you can go multiple directions with your product you could go super factual and educational or you could go emotional and you know um those appeal to different customers you know so you have to know who you're selling to and that takes time so sometimes that even means trying different things but you know we're we're creating a guide essentially that one pager between us and the brand you, you could do this for yourself as well right uh but this is the way we do it is um get us one thing that if we continue to create more products we don't have to go back to the drawing board every time we don't have to evaluate all these things if we're working with the freelancer Uh, We can say, hey, here is our brand guide. These are font colors. This is where we have to stay cohesive across our products. And that alone um, will set you up to be successful as you launch new products. Um, Does that make sense? Small brand book. Yes, but but not the traditional one if you go look it up. This is one like almost like a fast one for Amazon. It's quality, it looks amazing, um, but it gives you a kind of. a thing to agree on between client and an agency that says, Hey, this is where I really think we should go with the story. Um, so that whenever you're creating for them, at least as an agency, you don't create this, this story and these elements and all these photos and graphics. And then the brand be like, this isn't what we wanted. Right. Yeah. If you, right. if you can agree on that guide, if you can agree on that kind of the baseline for what the story should be, everything else follows suit. And then from there, I would say, um, you know, a mixture of, product story uh, on the PDP images, like the actual product itself and why it was invented or uh, how it's made or the ingredients. And then in the A plus page, which is uh, the area below the description, below the fold as you scroll down, very important for mobile shoppers, um, really helps sell them there. A lot of times that's where we can get a little bit deeper into the product story um, or, or we'll do product story up top and then brand story down there. These are the founders. This is like, you know, where they come from. This is why uh, they develop the product instead of what the product can do. It's, it's who am I buying it from? And if you can get that perfect blend, you're in the sweet spot. I bet. Uh, so when people are coming to you and they're like, okay, Andrea, I need this guide. How long will it take you to create it for them? Well, it will depend on what time of year and all those things, right? Where are we at in the queue? How many projects we have going on? That kind of thing. Um, but in general, you know, we are around a two to three week probably turnaround on something like that. You know, there's a couple brainstorming sessions. Uh, we get assets. What do you have already? What are you thinking? Um, let's say you have nothing. We, well, we need to talk about that. What's your vision for the product? You know, we can just create for others. It's way better if we create together. Um, you know, and for the most part, uh, Martinology, at least like we're, we're, we're at a level where we're trying to work with, with customers sellers brands that have a story and want to tell it some don't even want to tell it they don't care they don't want to spend on that that's just not really the best fit for us so if you're coming to us if you're trying to work with us you already kind of have this idea for a brand you want to bring to life or you have it already it's just not being told well um and we just come in to help help you bring that to life i love it and the last question i want to ask you for today uh you touched 
again, uh, the entertainment part about the brand. So we have a lot of social media going on where people are trying to create this like funny videos about their brands. Do you think it's useful or not? And what I are you think, opinion about it? Okay. I think if it's done right, just like selling on Amazon has to be done right. If it's done right, there is use for everything. You know, I think uh, content is either entertaining or it is educational, right? And entertaining can be sexy. It can be beautiful stuff. It can be, um, you know, funny, clever. Uh, you know, you see so many of these like sub niche products coming out like a uh, ballsy brand is one I worked with that, that got bought and sold uh, last year. And um, they are like uh, men's hygiene products, okay? Kind of, so like Manscaped. If you've heard of Manscaped, that company, they're competitor to them. Uh, so it's basically like it's body wash and deodorants and things okay. like that made, made for men, specifically to men. And they're kind of funny about it. You know, it's, it's like touching the line a little bit with uh, clever versus risque. You know, is, it, is this taboo? Um, not, nothing like curse words or anything like that, but just cleverness. And I think that there is a play there. What I'll say on the content side is, um, you know, just like you wouldn't post uh, on Instagram and say also post to Facebook, because when you do that, it, sure, sometimes you just have to get the job done. But in general, there's a way to post on Facebook and there's a way to post on Instagram and there's right. a way to post on LinkedIn. Right. And so the, the same thing with uh, with content on these platforms is, you know, design for the platform that you're on. Uh, know your customers that are on there. If you're designing for Gen Z on TikTok. Uh, not just that Gen Z is there, but if you're designing for them, you got to create content for them. Uh, and so some people are just, you know, dorky and, you know, I, I'm not sure those videos are working, uh, I'm not pointing any fingers. And other times, um, you know, I have a buddy right now that yesterday created a piece of content. Uh, he got uh, 2 million views in six hours. So I know it works. Uh, you just, you know, you have to be good at what you do. Um, you know, and so not, not all content hits, ev hits everyone. So, yeah, uh, sometimes it's just music. Sometimes it's the movement. Sometimes it's an actual content. So I absolutely agree. And you thank you so much. It was super valuable. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun always talking to you. You're like very good energized with a positive attitude. So I love it. And, um, I'll no, hold on how people can find you and how they supposed yes. to out you. Oh my gosh, I was so excited to talk to you. So I even forgot the main part. No, that would be amazing. Um, I'd love to chat with anyone, whether you're looking to work with us or just follow along my journey. Uh, you know, on Instagram, I, I post uh, my story, my pulls. Like, you know, I've been doing this uh, 11 years and uh, my hashtag is uh, watch me work uh, because I just wanted to document kind of my process and, and show how, how long it takes to get good at something really, really good um and, and grow so you know i'm a family family owned business and, and we post our stuff there at andrew morgan's on instagram everything else is business so linkedin uh youtube you can find you know some of my lessons or teachings or things like this on youtube um marknology.com that's m-a-r-k i love your website it's so thank you thing. you know it, it was built by a russian so oh, really uh, Built and designed by my friend Lilia. Uh, she's Russian and and helped me bring my story to life there. My story is there. Um, she was the one that pushed me to to write it out and share it with others. So I'll give her some. And credit. your music is also there. And I didn't mention you are also creating music, and it's actually pretty cool. Thank you, thank you. Um, anyway, I would love to connect with anyone. Um, you know, business inquiry or just social. Uh, you know, tell me what you, what you're doing on Amazon. Tell me what you're selling. Share it with me. I love this stuff. Um, I've been obsessing about e-commerce for a very long time. It's, I'm very passionate about it um, and would love to hear what's working for you guys. So uh, please say hello. Yeah. So I'm saying you hello and goodbye for now. Talk to you soon. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you.